kind of like having that light on in that quadrant of uh, the area here. But it, because I'm not moving over there, it always goes out. So sometimes it's like to walk over there and turn it up, turn it on. I don't have to walk too far, but uh, it's kind of cool having it on. It gives a little light coming through. Um, these are my, my bits. This is my smallest bit. I think this is a one inch. This one fits. I can't. Let me try my glasses. I think this is a one inch. I'm curious. Actually, this is an inch and a quarter. This one might be the perfect one. Um, Yeah, this one here is an inch, inch and eight, and I think I'm going inch, inch and a, whoa, wait, that, that was an inch and a quarter. This is actually inch and a half. No, that's an inch and a quarter. That's right. That's right. So we're going with this one. Now, my only concern with this is, um, this is a cheap bit, or four bits, I think it was. 12 bucks off of Amazon. So it's a cheap bit set. I don't know if it's, <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna survive. Um, it may survive one cut, we'll see. I may have to go spend a little money and, and buy a, a $15 bit. Like for, for what you would pay for like a Makita bit of this size, it'd be like 15 bucks. I got four for that, for less than that same price. So I'm not really expecting much. I've gotten good use out of this, especially in this cabinet and the holes I need to make here and other holes I had to make through wood. Um, but I haven't tried metal yet, so we'll see. What I've done with some of the cuts on the thicker pieces of wood, I've put some uh, uh, chain lube on here, and that has actually helped. So I'm actually gonna lube this up before I make my cuts and then get it done. Okay, I finally made it through the, the vinyl and the um, plaid. Wow, um, I thought I was getting through metal, but not. So what I'm gonna do is uh, take this off, remove uh, the material from, from the bit here, and then uh, clean it up, go at it again. Success. Wow. That smells, man, that was, uh, that's some heat there. But it seems like the bit held up. Um, I think the oil is a good thing. So yeah. Clean up the bit and we'll go for our second hole. Ah, just fell right out. Cool. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. It's not even a thick piece of metal, but it's definitely uh, some tough stuff. 
to cut through. But this cheap bit, wow, I'm impressed. Okay, for my, um, my time that's going to lapse before I can get to actually installing my heater, as you can see, I just put some Gorilla Tape on here. And uh, this is about, I only need it like, I had used one full box of this for my flooring. And I only needed like two boards out of this. So this thing's still about 25, 30 pounds. Uh, so I'm going to set that on top of there as well uh, for any extra added rodent protection. Hey friends, back to the van build today. One of the things I learned in my research yesterday was uh, a, a certain technique of cut that I need to do for my, uh, to, to place my diesel heater in the floor. Uh, and, and as I talked about yesterday, I need to get pretty much down to the metal to mount, to properly mount my diesel heater in the floor. And uh, I just took a sampling of what I cut out and it turns out to be with my little square here, I discovered that it was 11 sixteenths of an inch. So that is what I'm going to set my, the depth of my saw at and do the technique called the plunge cut. Simply uh, taking your saw, kind of starting it out and then setting it on your line and then starting the saw and then just cutting right in as the saw is, is as the blade is moving. a little long um, but that's a learning learning opportunity I'm gonna keep my area clean as possible just so I can see my lines and do the best job I can do square cut. Now I'm just going to try and pry it out with a pry bar after I clean it up, of course. So remember I put some pretty strong industrial glue for the board there, so I almost feel like I'm screwed, like I'm, like I, I don't know what to do, I'll figure something out. 